this. Catherine? It's a classic old-fashioned love story. Boy meets girl, boy dates girl, girl wants to get married, boy is unsure, boy meets new girl, new girl has the hots for boy, boy has nightmares that he's a sheep forced into climbing a metaphorical tower. I spent most of 2011 hoping that Atlas would release a new Persona game on the PlayStation 3 and got Catherine instead. It was something I've never played before, as it told a story that had a lot to say about grounded concepts like love, marriage, and settling down, albeit all from a man's point of view. The premise was interesting to me because I was a bachelor at the time and would ruminate on these topics as I watched friends around me find loved ones. After experiencing Catherine's doozy of a story, I really didn't pay much attention to it afterwards and it ended up being one of those Atlas curiosities that was fun at the time but forgotten not long after. Fast forward eight years later, and surprise! A Catherine for the new generation sporting updated textures, new animated cutscenes, a new character, and re-recorded dialogue is unleashed on the PlayStation 4. Catherine Full Body remains faithful to its unusually adult story. Vincent Brooks is an average, everyday 30-something engaged in a relationship with Catherine, whom he has known since high school. Catherine is a picture of cool, elegant confidence, and has a solid life plan that she wants Vincent to be a part of. Vincent, however, is a bit too aloof and presented as the stereotypical afraid of commitment guy sitcoms love to laugh at. Sidestepping the pressures of his daily life, he finds refuge among friends at the Stray Sheep Bar, knocking back a few as they swap stories, share their personal philosophies, and enjoy light, playful banter with the bar's soul hostess, Erica. As he struggles with the idea of marriage, Vincent is approached by Catherine, a foil for Catherine because of her more flirtatious and sexy mannerisms that capture his attention. This fateful meeting turns Vincent's life upside down as his nights are plagued by recurring nightmares of scaling increasingly dangerous towers for the amusement of some unknown force. Uh, hello? Catherine Full Body, like its original release, is a game in two parts. One is a visual novel that mostly plays out in the stray sheep where you can amuse yourself with a jukebox, play the game within a game Rapunzel's Tower, or view and compose emails to Vincent's acquaintances. Beyond that, this portion of the game is all about Vincent, his friends, and Erica ruminating on life and love, the strange rumors circulating the city, and drinking the night away. The most significant departure from the 2011 version is the addition of Vryn, a character made specifically for this re-release. A cute, pink-haired amnesiac with striking blue eyes, she enters Vincent's life anime style after being pursued by some unseen stalker. Serving as a third potential romance option, she compliments Catherine and Catherine well enough by being the lesser intense of the three. Their relationship through the game falls within the big brother little sister territory and Vincent's interactions are a breath of fresh air because unlike the other women, he seems calm and relaxed in her presence. Vincent and his friends recognize that there's something special about Rin and you're gonna have to play through the game to find out what that is. The other half of the game occurs when Vincent goes to bed and is transported to a nightmare inhabited by other people that appear to him as anthropomorphic sheep. Their identities are hidden, but eagle-eyed players might spot small details that reveal them to be the people Vincent knows from the stray sheep. Their reasons for being there, as well as Vincent, is left unknown and the only way to escape is to climb a dangerous tower by pushing and pulling blocks to form a safe path to the top. Think of all this as a vertical take on the classic warehouse puzzle game Sokoban, only a hell of a lot more Freudian. The player has to work quickly or risk Vincent falling to his death because the blocks below him fall away row by row, giving the gameplay a stressful urgency. Vincent can hop on and off blocks and also skirt around the edges to access hard to reach areas or as part of a technique to create paths where there are none. You'll earn a multitude of different techniques and strategies that are really useful for later levels that introduce complex block types that limit your movement and force you into thinking several moves ahead. If you make a mistake or accidentally cause a block to fall out of play, there's an undo option that is as forgiving as the difficulty setting you've selected. On the easiest setting, you can skip the puzzle entirely by letting the game run on autopilot, leaving you to focus on the story sections instead. Exclusive to Catherine Full Body is a special puzzle mode that adds Tetris-shaped pieces to the mix for a level of complexity mostly beneficial for returning players looking for a new challenge. 
The nightmares are appropriately quirky and creepy as they are designed around different themes of torture and punishment. They are also quite heavy-handed. After all, this is a game that loves to beat the player over the head with its metaphors on love and marriage. Each nightmare consists of two to three puzzle stages followed by a boss encounter where you must evade a freaky creature that takes on the twisted form of an idea or concept Vincent encountered the day before. For example, the first boss is a pair of hands wielding a fork because Catherine used one to stab a dessert during their lunch date. When Catherine brings up the idea of marriage, his pursuer becomes a monstrous version of his girlfriend wearing a wedding dress. When he meets Catherine for the first time, he is attacked by a Silent Hill looking butt creature that has an ever shifting face of a sexy woman. On top of these glaring analogies, you'll be asked to answer morality based questions designed to push and pull the needle on a meter that denotes Vincent's conscionable state. How you respond to these innocuous and prodding questions influences the story's direction towards one of multiple character specific endings. Actions outside the nightmare, such as drinking heavily or composing rude emails, can also affect his standing too. Whether you're chatting away at the stray sheep or trying to survive the night, both versions of Catherine carry themselves in a manner that might feel a bit off by today's standards. The story and writing feels exclusively built around a man's view of commitment. Vincent isn't much of a sympathetic character, and I was far more annoyed with him this go-around because it's absolutely excruciating to watch as he digs himself into a hole of his own creation because he is utterly incapable of communicating his feelings. I might understand this better if Vincent were a high school kid, but he's like 32 years old and kinda should know better. The inability for me as a player to step in and make critical decisions is frustrating because Vincent has a tendency to act in self-destructive ways and I just can't trust him to make the right call on his own. Another issue I developed replaying the game is the depiction of Catherine. She's almost a villain in the story because she's portrayed as being pushy, passive aggressive, and bossy. It's almost like the story makes her out to be the bad guy just because she has it together and Vincent doesn't. Hey, where'd you go? Snap out of <gasps> it! Were you even listening? Uh, sure. You know, you've been a little out of it lately. Is everything all right? You've been spacing out left and right. Oh, sorry. I uh, had to work early this morning. <laughs> My own struggles aside, I cannot praise Catherine Fullbody's presentation and production values enough. Voiceover superstars Troy Baker, Aaron Fitzgerald, and Critical Role alums Laura Bailey, Liam O'Brien, and Travis Willingham prove why they are the best in this business, delivering authentic performances that make these characters, flawed as they may be, shine so brightly. On an artistic level, Full Body takes advantage of the production values afforded to the engine that ran Persona 5. The texture work on the in-game models is gorgeous and packed with a level of detail you haven't seen in previous Atlas titles. The story of Catherine is expanded with the addition of all new animated cutscenes that explore new endings and previously unseen memories of Vincent and Catherine in their prime that go a long way to add much needed dimension and backstory to their characters. Catherine Full Body is a curious remaster. After completing the game eight years ago, I never really felt like this was something that would benefit from an enhanced re-release, and yet, it kind of does. Both the character of Rin and new cinematics enrich the story in ways that give it more depth, even if it does venture into some really wild supernatural territory by the end. And at no point does Rin feel shoehorned into the story. I can't imagine how tricky it must have been to write in a whole new character to a pre-existing work, but Full Body makes it look really easy by fitting her in with nary an exposed seam. Catherine Full Body might not be for everyone, it's the very definition of a niche title, yet in the end, I find it hard not to appreciate it on an artistic level. Darkstation gives Catherine Full Body for the PlayStation 4, 4 out of 5 stars.